right, good morning, scholars. We are back at it again with our read aloud lesson. We are going to read Charlotte's Web, Chapter 17. Um, and we're going to look at Charlotte and Wilbur's perspective. Remember, in the last chapter, they went to the fair and they're really excited for Wilbur to be showing off him being a fantastic and a terrific and amazing pig. So today we're going to focus on Charlotte's perspective about the fair and Wilbur's perspective about the fair. Let's see. Go ahead and open your PDF file to chapter 17. You can follow along as I read. The title is called Uncle. Our first big idea. Charlotte doesn't like Uncle very much. She thinks he's not pleasant. Charlotte is worried that Uncle might beat Wilbur because he is big. She wants Wilbur to win. So let's see what Charlotte's talking about in this chapter. When they pulled into the fairgrounds, they could hear music and see the Ferris wheel turning into the sky. They could smell the dust of the racetrack where the sprinkling cart had moistened it. And they could smell hamburgers frying and seeing <clears throat> balloons aloft. They could hear sheep blatting in their pens. An enormous voice over the loudspeaker said, Attention, please. Will the owner of a Pontiac car, license number H2439, please move your car away from the fireworks shed? Can I have some money, asked Fern. Can I too, asked Avery. I'm going to win a doll by spinning a wheel and it will stop right at the number, said Fern. I'm going to steer a jet plane and make it bump into another one. Can I have a balloon, asked Fern. Can I have frozen custard and a cheeseburger and some raspberry soda pop, asked Avery. Your children be, you children be quiet while we get the pig unloaded, said Miss Arable. Let the children go off by themselves, suggested Mr. Arable. The fair only comes once a year. Mr. Arable gave Fern two quarters and two dimes. He gave Avery five dimes and four nickels. Now run along, he said. And remember, the money has to last all day. Don't spend it in the first few minutes. And be back here at the truck at noontime so we can all have lunch together. And we don't eat a lot of that stuff that's going to make you sick to your stomach. And if you go on those swings, said Mrs. Arable, you hang on tight, very tight. You hear me? And don't get lost, said Mrs. Zuckerman. And don't get dirty. Don't get overheated, said their mother. Watch out for pit pockets cautioned their father. And don't cross the racetrack when horses are coming, cried Mrs. Zuckerman. The children grabbed each other by the hand and danced off in the direction of the merry-go-round toward the wonderful music and the wonderful adventure and wonderful excitement into the wonderful midway where there would be no parents to guard them or guide them and where they could be happy and free and do as they pleased. I see that Fern and Avery, her brother, are all going out by themselves to have fun at the fair. Mrs. Arable stood quietly and watched them go. Then she sighed. <sighs> then she blew her nose. Do you think, do you really think it's all right, she asked. Well, they've got to grow up sometime, said Mr. Arable. And the fair is a good place to start, I guess. And here is Fern and Avery going to the fair. It looks so fun. While Wilbur was being unloaded and taken out of his crate into the new pig pen, crowds gathered to watch. They stared at the sign, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Wilbur stared back and tried to look extra good. He was pleased with his new home. The pen was grassy, and it was shaded from the sun by the shed roof. Charlotte, watching her chance, scrambled out of the crate and climbed and climbed a post to the other side of the roof. Nobody noticed her. Templeton, not wishing to come out in a broad daylight, stayed quietly under the straw at the bottom of the crate. Mr. Zuckerman poured some skim milk into Wilbur's trough, pitched clean straw into his pen, and then Mrs. Zuckerman and the arables walked away toward the cattle barn to look at the pre-bred cows to see the sights. Mr. Zuckerman particularly wanted to look at tractors. Mrs. Zuckerman wanted to see a deep freeze. Lurvy wandered off by himself, hopping, hoping to meet friends and have some fun on the midway. As soon as the people were gone, Charlotte spoke to Wilbur. It's a good thing that you can't see what I see, she said. 
What do you see? Asked Wilbur. There's a pig in the pen and he's enormous. I'm afraid he's much bigger than you are. Uh-oh. I think I found my first piece of evidence. Charlotte doesn't like Uncle very much. She thinks he's not pleasant. Charlotte is worried that he might be Wilbur because he is big. And I found my first piece of evidence to support that the other pig is bigger than Wilbur. So I'm going to write here on page 134, there is a pig. Make sure that you're writing the page number, page 134. Then you're making sure that you write your quotation marks. There is a pig. In the next pen, and he's enormous. Much bigger than you are. Remember, pause the video. I'm going too fast. I'm going to put my in quotation marks. Let's keep reading to see if we can find more evidence. Maybe he's older than I am and has more time to and has had more time to grow. Tears begin to come into his eyes. I'll drop down and have a closer look, Charlotte said. Then she crawled along a beam till she was directly over the next pen. She let herself down on a drag line until she hung herself in the air just in front of the big pig snout. May I have your name, she asked politely. The pig stared at her. No name, he said in a big hearty voice. Just call me uncle. Very well, uncle, replied Charlotte. Now we know that the bigger pig's name is uncle and not actually Fern's uncle. What is the date of your birth? Are you a spring pig? Sure, I'm a spring pig, replied Uncle. What did you think I was, a spring chicken? Ha, ha, that's a good one, eh, sister? Mildly funny, said Charlotte. I've heard funnier ones, though. Glad to have met you, and now I must be going. Hmm, that's another piece of evidence. Charlotte does not like Uncle. She said, mildly funny. That means when Uncle told his joke, Charlotte did not like his joke because she doesn't like him very much. So I'm going to add that to my text evidence, page 134, quotation marks, mildly funny, said Charlotte, mildly funny, said Charlotte, and then my end quotation marks. All right, let's keep reading, see if we can find one more piece of evidence. I've heard funnier ones, though. Glad to have met you, and now I must be going. She ascended slowly and returned to Wilbur's pen. He claims he's a spring pig, re reported Charlotte, and perhaps he is. One thing is certain, he has a most unattractive personality. He is too familiar, too noisy, and he cracks weak jokes. Also, he's not anywhere near as clean as you are, nor as pleasant. I look quite a I look quite a dislike to him in our brief interview. He's going to be a hard pig to beat though, Wilbur, on account of his size and weight. But with me helping you, it can be done. When when are you going to spin a web, asked Wilbur, this afternoon, late, if I'm not too tired, said Charlotte. So here's my next piece of evidence that proves that Charlotte does not like uncle. She said lots of things. I'm not going to write all of it because I'm running out of a little bit of space. So on page 135, I'm going to make sure I put my quotation marks. And then I'm going to write what Charlotte is saying. He is too familiar. Too noisy. And cracks weak jokes.
I took quite a dislike, meaning she doesn't like him, to him in our brief interview. I want to put my end quotation marks just to make sure that I know that it's coming right out of the book. Good. Now we know Charlotte's perspective of uncle. Charlotte does not like uncle because she thinks that he is too big and is going to be Wilbur. Now we need to look at Wilbur's perspective. Let, let's look at his big idea. Wilbur feels that uncle is bigger than he is because if he beats Wilbur, then Wilbur might be killed. Hmm. let's see if we can find some text evidence. But Ms. McKinney's not going to find that evidence. You are. But we are going to finish reading chapter 17 first. This, this afternoon, late if I'm not too tired, said Charlotte. The least thing tires me these days. I don't seem to have the energy I once had. My age, I guess. Wilbur looked at his friend. She looked rather swollen and she seemed listless. I'm awfully sorry to hear that you're feeling poorly, Charlotte, he said. Perhaps if you spin a web and catch a couple of flies, you'll feel better. Perhaps, she said wearily. But I feel like the end, I feel like the end of a long day. Clinging upside down to the ceiling, she settled down for a nap, leaving Wilbur very much worried. All morning, people wandered past Wilbur's pen. Dozens and dozens of strangers stopped to stare at him and admire his silky white coat and his curly tail, his kind and radiant expression. Then they would move on to the next pen where the bigger pig lay. Wilbur heard several people making favorable remarks about Uncle's great size. He couldn't help overhearing these remarks and he couldn't help worrying. And now Charlotte not feeling well, he thought, oh dear. All morning, Templeton slept quietly under the straw. The day grew fiercely hot. And at the noon, at noon, the Zuckermans and the Arables returned to the pig pen. Then a few minutes later, Avery showed up. Fern had a monkey doll in her arms and was eating Cracker Jack. Avery had a balloon tied to his ear and was chewing a candied apple. The children were hot and dirty. Isn't it hot, said Miss Zuckerman. It's terribly hot, said Mrs. Arable, fanning herself with an advertisement of deep freeze. One by one, they climbed into the truck and opened lunchboxes. The sun beat down on everything. No one seemed hungry. When the judges were going to decide about, when are the judges going to decide about Wilbur, asked Mrs. Zuckerman. Not till tomorrow, said Mr. Zuckerman. Lurvy appeared carrying an Indian blanket that he had won. That's just what we need, said Avery. A blanket. Of course it is, replied Lurvy, and he spread the blanket across the sideboards of the truck so that it was like a little tent. The children sat in the shade under the blanket, and it felt better. After lunch, they stretched out and fell asleep. Now, scholars, we know Charlotte's perspective about Uncle. And also in Chapter 17, it talks a little bit about what Wilbur thinks about Uncle. And he says a few remarks. So make sure that you're finding that text evidence to support this big idea. Don't forget the page number and your quotation marks. Can't wait to see it.